Is technology at your work distracting you from actual work? Do you spend too much time troubleshooting PC or internet issues? IT Enabled can help! Our team of IT specialists can help you tackle your technology troubles and get you focused on growing your business in no time. Call to schedule your technology consultation. 936-225-3329 IT Enabled, we're here to help. Well, we're so honored to have Sarah Atkinson. I'm here with Atkinson Candy Company. I have known, I think, Sarah her entire life. Um, and it's so fun to watch you come back home and to carry on your family's tradition. So for those of you that don't know you that are listening to the podcast, why don't you tell them about yourself, um, where all you went, and then uh, your history of coming back home. Sure. So um, Sarah Atkinson, I'm with Atkinson Candy Company. And born and raised in Lufkin, Texas, graduate of Lufkin High School, 2000. Um, and then I got out of here pretty fast. <laughs> uh, went out to see the world, lived in New York City for a while, uh, quite a while actually. Um, did my undergraduate work at UMass Amherst and then um, went to New York for graduate school, graduated from NYU. And uh, after quite a, a while away, I decided to come home and sort of dip into the family business and start to learn what candy making is all about. And um, it's a sweet gig. I, I tried to get away a couple of times. I worked um, in a PR agency uh, and with a women's networking group in Dallas. And I constantly found myself calling back home and <laughs> saying like, oh, I'm doing these things with my clients, doing these things with my other job. We should try something similar with the candy company. And it was mostly around you know marketing communications. Mm -hmm. And eventually my dad was like, why don't you just come do this for, for us? us? Yeah, you know, you have all these great ideas. Let's put this to good use. Um, so I came back and kind of started on the marketing side, uh, product development, packaging. Mm -hmm. um, this is also kind of when social media was new. So set up our online presence there. And then just really things started to, to bloom. I had got more and more interested in the business and was learning more aspects of it. And a year ago, I became the executive vice president of the company, and I run the day-to-day -day operations. Oh, that's great. That's Thank great. You. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. so fun to come back home, mm. even though we get out of here as fast as possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think there's so many of us right. that graduated here and said, I'll never come back, and I'll never live here. Yeah. And then we um, all do. And then we all came <laughs> home. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. a reoccurring story on this podcast, as people will uh go off for school and I'm never coming back and then here we all are. Yeah. That's, I, I did the same thing and, and you did the same thing yeah. too. You just yeah. left and uh, you, you miss it and it's, uh, it's just something special about it that makes you want to come. So tell us about the history of the company. So it's a really important company for Lufkin. It's been around for a long time. Tell us a little bit of, of that background. Yeah, so the company um, was founded by my great grandparents mm -hmm. in 1932. So it was the height of the depression. Uh, my great grandfather was a lathe operator at the foundry and he was laid off when the depression hit. And he was really just trying to find a way to make money for his family. Right. And uh, I think it was an uncle or something told him, hey, why don't you sell candy? Candy's a good business. And so he started driving to Houston, would buy candy from wholesalers there. And it was basically what they call a jobber. So he would buy product and then sell it to little mom and pop shops between okay. Lufkin and Houston. And eventually that business grew into a wholesale business, uh, which was located in downtown Lufkin. And around, I think, the early 1940s, they decided to start manufacturing some candies on their own. And my great grandmother was just the most amazing cook, you know, sort of like traditional Southern mm -hmm. recipes. And so a lot of the original candies that they made were based on those recipes. Mm -hmm. So like peanut brittle, divinity, mm -hmm. things like that. And that just sort of grew and grew. Um, in the 1950s, we started uh, selling nationally and had trademarks and brands and the business just continued to evolve from there to where we are today being an international business based in Lufkin, Texas. That's right. How cool yeah. is that? Yeah. You know, I always love when we've got stuff going on. Um, you know, I'll take a, I'll go by the candy store and pick up a whole thing of Chico sticks or mm -hmm. peanut butter logs and take them and pass them out. And they're like, these are fantastic. I grew up in these. I'm like, those are made in Lufkin. Those Lufkin, are my Texas. hometown. Yeah. yeah. And it's just so fun to be able to say that. I think yeah. that, I think Lufkinites are, are so proud to be able to say uh, that Atkinson candy is based in Lufkin and that yeah. no matter how big you've gotten, 
globally that you're still right here in the hometown. Yeah, we like to say Chico Sticks are probably one of the best ambassadors Lufkin, Texas. That's has. exactly <laughs> right. Every package says made in Lufkin, Texas. That's right. It's so. true. Yeah, That's we moved right. a lot when I was a kid, and I remember anytime we were at a, a grocery store or a gas station that happened to have it, we would always grab it because that was a little piece of Lufkin right. that we could remember. Yeah. That's that's really that's really awesome. So over the years, you have expanded your business. Mm -hmm. I know several years ago um, that you did a 30,000 square foot expansion. Tell us about what went into the expansion. So that expansion was really to get us prepared for um, a major third party audit called Safe Quality Food. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's kind of the gold standard for food manufacturing facilities. Um, And what we had to do, because we work so much with peanuts and peanut butter, which is a class one allergen, there's a lot of rules about segregation so that there's not cross contamination Mm -hmm. with products that don't have peanuts or peanut butter in it. So part of that expansion was to kind of make room to be able to do that segregation and to lay out our facility in a way that we'd be able to comply with these third party audits. Sure. Um, yeah, so it's really kind of taken our business to the next level to mm-hmm. be able to do that. There are a lot of retailers that won't even consider taking your product in unless you have the certification. Okay. Um, so we've had it now for a year. We're actually being audited again this week. It's an annual thing. Um, but the expansion was really to kind of lean into our future and all of the uh, other future plans that we have, including uh, bringing in more machinery for more product capabilities, um, maybe one day getting into chocolate. It's not something we do right now, but we okay. have room for it and we have aspirations for it. Cool. Nice. Um, so it was kind of just an expansion to lay the ground for all of our future plans. Sure. And it's, you know, it's a project like, you know, eating an elephant one bite at a time, right. right? So SQF was the first thing, check that box. So now we're moving on to... Yeah. So is that like on the the back of a packaging is like this was made at a facility that may process peanuts? Is it that kind of situation? Yeah, we have to have that on on all of our packaging. Interesting. Very cool. Well, you had me at chocolate, so I'm I'm, (laughs) I'm interested in wherever this expansion is headed. I'm I'm all for it. It's probably our number one request from consumers nationwide. Really? Can you please put chocolate on a Chico stick? Wow. Oh, that would be good now. Hey, Mm. you definitely have my attention. I I I am all... All for that. Watch out, Butterfinger. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, that's that's right. exactly right. That's really good. What? Uh, so is everything still manufactured here in Lufkin? Do you guys do all your manufacturing The here? large majority of our products are made here. All of our Chico sticks, mm-hmm. peanut butter bars, brittle, all of that's made here. Right. We do have a facility in Guatemala uh-huh. where we make our peppermint. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very neat. So I remember as uh, a kid actually getting to tour uh, the yes. candy part and, yeah. and watching the the peppermint being pulled and the taffy so being cool. pulled and yeah. like it was the coolest thing to watch them add in the color and to watch it swirl and and all of that um for those that are not uh, that have never experienced that um why don't you tell them if if they were to just have this great view into the candy making facility what are some things that they would see happening oh, back it is there? such a cool process and i wish we could still so do good. it does smell good yes i wish we could still do tours um unfortunately between covid and food auditors That's right. and all these other regulations that we have to follow. We can't currently do it, um, but it is a beautiful process and mm-hmm. we still do it the good old fashioned That's way. Right. The candy is handmade, um, but it's almost like a dance when you kind of watch the people in the kitchen producing the products, the way they sort of move through the different stations and mm-hmm. different steps of making it. It's almost like a choreographed dance. I have yeah. a dance background, so yeah, I, okay. I equate everything it to works. dancing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but it it is a really beautiful process and it is still really kind of how the candy was um made you know back in the day when my great grandparents were doing it Mm -hmm. Um, but there is that hand stretching component and when we do make striped candy it's all hand striped um there are some videos out there on youtube we've done some food network shows um in the past and i think a lot of that's out there so if anyone's interested you know, give us I know the Google day tripper the actually YouTube. came several yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah. Right. Was here. We brought in the day that. tripper back yeah. when I worked for the city, yeah. and he came and uh, dressed up as an Oompa Loompa. Yep. I was mortified <laughs> yep. because yep. he didn't tell us he was going to do that, and I was like, "No, no, no, so no this funny. is not going to work." This is not that kind of candy. <laughs> That's yet. so funny. But um, yeah, if you've not seen it, go go Google it and find it because it it's is beautiful, cool. yeah. and it's so just neat to watch and to think that yeah. all of that comes into this small tiny little piece that you get to enjoy yeah so. it starts out the crazy thing um each batch is about 80 pounds so it starts out of this big giant blob and then it gets rolled smaller and smaller and smaller 
to either, you know, the stick size or the nuggets, whichever piece of candy ends up being. But right. it's just kind of crazy to watch that process yeah. go from this big blob of candy to the final, That's fun. final piece. Yeah, That's great. So you guys are coming up on the horizon 100 years in the next, close. yeah, pretty yeah. pretty soon. What, how's it, how have things changed in that oh my almost gosh. 100 years that you guys have been in business? So much. I mean, I can only speak to the last 13 years, right, right. <laughs> what happened prior to that. Um, but there's been a lot, like I mentioned before, a lot of regulation right. in the industry. So a lot of around, you know, fade, uh, food safety, um, good manufacturing practices, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, but then just sort of consumer wants and needs have changed as well. So, mm -hmm. for example, recently we did a little tweak to Chico Sticks where we got rid of artificial colors and flavors and are using natural colors and flavors. That's great. And we kind of made it a mission to go through some of our top items, top brands, and remove any other artificial or, um, well, basically our whole tenet was to have simple ingredients mm -hmm. so that when you read the ingredient panel in the back, it's words you know. Right, stuff you can pronounce. Yeah, yeah, things you can pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <the> things <laughs> right. can pronounce. Uh -huh. It's things that you would have in your home pantry, sure. you know, sugar, salt, peanut butter. Uh -huh. It doesn't sound like a science project yeah. when you read the label. Um, so just kind of making those little changes sure. uh, to meet consumer preferences. Um, also calling out, you know, our products, they always have been, but they are gluten-free, vegan-friendly, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Oh, so just great. kind of making sure that our consumers and our customers um, know that these products always have been. You Those know, are just the key words that people right. say yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, but it's just letting them know that right. they always have been, but they are. Yeah. You know? We yeah. did a documentary recently about rice, and they talked about that, like, we have to put gluten-free on a bag of rice that is only rice. There's no gluten in rice right. and there never has been, but yeah. now people want to know that it's yeah. gluten free. I mean, well, consumers that are those, paying attention. Yeah, so. right. That you're making those changes. Yeah. Very cool. That's right. Yeah. So I know that the city and the community has played mm -hmm. a really big role for y'all. Um, how has working with everyone just increased the level of productivity for y'all? Well, I mean, Lufkin obviously is home base. The business is born and bred here. All mm -hmm. of our employees, you know, are from this community. Um, so the community itself plays a, a huge role in our business for mm -hmm. sure. And, um, you know, unfortunately with COVID, it's been a little hard to get out and, and do some fun things. But this past October at Halloween, we did um, a drive through. We called it a Chico treat instead of trick or treat. We loved uh, it. And it was so much fun. Yeah. So yeah. much fun. Um, so we hope to do more events like that That's in great. the future as as COVID eases up, hopefully. And That's great. Um, get more involved with the community. and. Yeah. Have some fun. I mean, we're in the candy making business. It should be fun. It we want to fun. share that fun and happiness with not only our employees, but our community at large. For sure. Yeah. Well, that's great. So you mentioned some of your, one of your goals and hope for the future would be chocolate. Mm. Uh, what else do you have on the horizon that's a, a, a vision that you would like to see happen? So we're actually doing a lot of um, co-manufacturing right now as well. Um, so that's just kind of on, on the business end, yeah. um, making products for other folks um since we do specialize in class one allergens peanuts um, we have a lot of companies that are deciding to come to us to have their product made um, for example we are currently the licensee for mary jane candies i don't know if you're okay. familiar okay. with that product yeah. it's more a traditional uh northeastern product mm -hmm. uh, a company called Neko, the New mm -hmm. England confectionery company, um, used to make it. They went out of business, and now uh, Spangler Candy, who owns Dum Dums, um, they own the brand, but they have allergen-free facilities. Mm -hmm. So, since we are yeah the people in peanuts, right in that, yeah. they came to us to make the product. Nice. So I see more of our business continuing on in this co-manufacturing. Yep. Of course, we'll continue to make our own brands as well, right. um, but just kind of being that go-to for right. um, peanut-based candy, yeah. since that's well, really that's great our for specialty. business. That's great for local Lufkin jobs as you yeah, kind of expand into sure. that stuff. Well, that's really that's really good to hear. That's yeah. right. Hey, I'm all for jobs and chocolate. Like, let's, let's go. <laughs> right? I am, right? I am in y'all's camp on this stuff. Yeah. So, I, you know, if you are not um, aware, you can actually go into the candy store, which is to the side. This yes. candy kitchen. Yes, that's we what call it the candy, candy kitchen. kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have never been in the candy kitchen, you are missing out. You are. It is the best kept secret in Lufkin. And it smells, I could eat the air when I walk in there. It's <laughs> it the best. Really it smells so yeah. good. Mm -hmm. um, and t remind me of the lady's name that works in there because she's been in there. Angela. Yeah, she's been in there Angela's forever. Amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but you know, you've you've got bags of candy that you can just walk in and purchase. And um, mm-hmm. I know that uh, we at the chamber we like to keep Atkinson candy at, available for people, and we like to give it out at the trick or treat stuff with uh, the city. Mm-hmm. Um, I had just uh, said to Sarah, I got to go get my candy to stuff Easter eggs. Yeah. So you know, it's it's always great to be able to go and purchase bulk bags mm-hmm. of candy so if you're if you're not familiar with the candy kitchen go check it out yeah the candy kitchen is great you'll find little gems that you didn't even know we made yeah and there's literally like hundreds those little of lemon and little oh. lemon slices oh my God. i don't think i've tried yeah. those I'm dude those to, are so good i'm gonna have to try that out. <laughs> make you pucker a little bit yeah it's like a lemon head kind of stuff or is it like no gummy? It's it's like a little tiny slice of lemon and mm-hmm. Ooh, it's a hard candy a hard candy okay yeah. i'm in it's yeah. so good give it a try yeah, yeah, there's all sorts of fun treats there. And it's literally the freshest candy you'll get. Yeah, so. it's the best. Yeah. It's the best. Well, we're just so excited to have you, Sarah, and to be able to tell people about the history of the company. Um, what are Is there anything else you want to share about what's going on? or? Well, I, I think at this point, you know, um, I think COVID obviously has impacted us all and it's been kind of a, a wild ride there, but yeah. it seems like things are starting to level out a little bit. So hopefully we'll see um, some normalcy coming right. soon there. Um, but just to, to put it out to your audience, we are hiring. So if Good. there are folks out there looking for a great career, Candy's right. not a bad place to be. Hey, um, so definitely uh, reach out to us. And then like you mentioned, the candy shop, um, it's a fun little treasure trove of goodies. So um, we just encourage the community to come out and and check it out. And hopefully we'll be able to do some more events soon. Um, But yeah, those are kind of the- So if they're interested in getting a resume to you, do they just come bring it to the office? Do they email it to you? What do they need to do? Yeah, they can um, give us a call and ask for our HR department and they will lead the way perfect yeah perfect awesome well we thank you so much for your time this has been uh really insightful really exciting about everything you guys have going on in the future and uh we thank you so much for coming on the podcast thank and, you so and much chatting for with us me. and we want to thank all of our listeners for listening again this week we really appreciate you tuning in and listening to these episodes we just can't get over the community support that we've had we're so thankful for that and if you'll do us a huge favor if you'll subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast so that you can catch every episode every Monday when we sit down with somebody in our community and learn about their story or their business. And thank you so much. And we will see you next week.